you know, I'm, all, I'm often asked about, you know, what's the best way to, uh, you know, work with analyst firms like Gartner, etc. And there's probably four really significant points to think about. Uh, the first one is, are you prepared to play the game? Are you actually willing uh, to do what it takes to build a successful relationship with these firms? And and if you're not, uh, then really stop whinging about them, ignore them, and just carry on with your business and just be successful. But if you are, then you really need to think about, firstly, what is the criteria by which each of those analyst firms will be judging your business and your product and all your services? And that's a really interesting component and a really interesting distinction. So every analyst firm is different. They have different customer bases. They have a different reason for being. And you need to understand that to understand how your business fits into that. And, and so when you are starting to communicate with those firms then, you need to fit your story into their narrative. You have to be able to understand how what you do will help them to be successful with their customer base as well. So for example, if you're dealing with someone like a Gartner who fundamentally sells into enterprise, then the long-term viability of your business is really, really critical for them to take you seriously. So understand that, get that right, and build your story around that. The third component of this then really is think taking a long-term view. So when you start to work with analysts, you'll realize that the vast majority of analysts have been covering the space for a very long time. There's very few newbies in the market. And so for any really significant analyst firm, uh, even the people that they bring in that are new have been working in the space for a significant period of time. They know the market, they know the analysts, they've heard all the stories before. So you need to be able to approach those relationships with one that is you know, as honest and transparent and is built for long term. This is, this is a relationship you need to nurture over the years. Uh, you're not going to get a huge big bang out of a single briefing. Uh, it's going to take you dozens of briefings over the years to really build up the confidence of those analysts that you know what you're talking about. And the very last one is, is be prepared to allocate resources and spend the money to do it well. Uh, so you, you need to have one internally, great AR people that will manage those relationships for you. This is a full-time job. If you're going to commit to this, then you have to have a plan at some point to put real people in this 24-7 working for you and nurturing those relationships. The second part of that is you will need to spend money with those firms. You need to engage them on a commercial level so that you get more time to talk to analysts, that you can actually use them not only to pitch your own product, but to learn about the market. And it's actually learning about the market that I think is the most valuable component of that relationship. because. Once you understand how they perceive the market and where the market's going, you can tailor your products, your service to that. And again, it helps you back in with the pitch with the firm. So the number of times that we've had fantastic feedback from analysts who said, hey, if your product only did X or Y, and then you know, six months later you can go back to them and go, hey, thanks for that, we've done the X and the Y. And you know, it, it helps you move forward, not only in your product, gets you there faster, um, but it also helps again to build the relationship with those vendors um, really, really effectively.